So hi there we first welcome back to an episode of Dreaming Wave. So like what we talked about last week, right? Today we are actually gonna talk about dosing. So I will share with you guys on the three tanks that I've been dosing so far. So we move over with the fish only system first. So this tank technically there's really nothing much to dose. I don't dose anything aside from cupramine, just um copper so that um I do not have any white spot in this tank. And that's all I do. But then I do not keep copper at a very high level, so I tend to only do about very therapeutic, like maybe only within the range of like 0.15. That's the max that I'll go for my normal therapeutic range. And then if let's say if I see white spots, then I will bring it up all the way to 0.25, 0.35, and that's the max. So pretty simple for this tank. The fish only doesn't really have much in it for me to talk about in dosing. So I know that most of you guys are more interested in this tank, which is the reef tank as well as the 14 gallon. So these are the two tanks that I dose a lot. Well, basically actually it's only this tank. This is the only tank that I really dose a lot, especially in all the foundation elements so far and so on. So for this tank, right, it's a bit special. So. For those of you guys who don't know, right, I've been using the Red Sea products for all of my dosing. So I will share with you guys on what have I been dosing and what am I using to actually dose and actually get all the parameters stable for this tank. So let's move over to the table here. So let me show you the products that we have. Just let me sit down first. Okay, so we look at the products that I've been dosing, right? I've been always using Red Sea only for all of my reef tanks. So this is why we have a couple of stuff here to show you. So in terms of foundation elements, right, I have the Red Sea A, B, and C. So we talk a bit here. So the A, B, and C, oh, wrong side, yeah. So this are the three foundation elements that I dose on a bi-daily dosing. So basically every alternate day I will dose in for the 25 gallon that you see over there. So I tend to keep my calcium a bit higher even though it's a... Okay, it's not really a soft coral tank. There's a couple of LPSs here and there. But then I usually keep my calcium range about 420. And then for cage or elk, I try to do it at about 8.5. So these are my two, usually my very important one. And then for magnesium, I will just dose about 10 mLs every alternate day just to stabilize the parameters. I don't really care much about how much I dose in magnesium. I usually focus a bit more on my calcium and my elk. These are the two things that I watch very, very frequently. So these are the three elements that I use for the Red Sea Foundation. So I personally like this very much. It's pretty easy to use. Basically, it's they come in bottles like this where they even allow you to use your auto dozer. So you can actually just plug your little airline in here and you can actually just put the bottle there and it will just do the auto dose for you. So I'm actually planning to get a auto dozer for the 25 gallon. But then I haven't really set up the whole area yet. This tank is still very new. So there's a lot more things that I want to do with that tank. So I'll probably still carry on using this until maybe I find something else or maybe some other supplements that I like. But then the good thing about this is I really like this tree. The only drawback is the elk wise because these guys tend to produce this precipitate in the water. So when you dose elk, right, try to be very careful. Do not just dump the whole thing in because you ended up with like this white stuff going all over your tank. So usually, the only reason why I want to go with the auto dosing is just to prevent that. And then aside from it, right, I've been using a carbon dosing method which is no pox. So I use this for on a okay this one daily, and then this one alternate days, just to keep all my water parameters stable and then at the same time right I do like a weekly water change for the 25 gallon so that's how I actually keep all my parameters in check and then at the same time I will do test my parameters every alternate day as well 
for the last thing, this one is not from Red Sea, it's actually from Brightwell Aquatics, which is the Microbacter 7 or the Microbacter Clean. So I usually just buy either of that, either the Clean or the 7. The reason why is because I usually use this to top up all my beneficial bacteria. So this is a very good brand that I recommend. It works very well with no pox, apparently. So what it does is this one actually gives the bacteria and then this one actually fits it. So I kind of like these two combination together. And then at the same time with the A, B and C. So all these five are actually like my bread and butter for my reef tank. So aside from this range here, right, this four over here are basically like my supplements for all of my corals so it's really mainly for coral color so these guys here i only dose like every sunday just to add in a little bit of all the little trace elements that is not inside an artificial ocean which is like all our typical reef out there you do need to give your coral supplements so this four here are these supplements so red sea do encourage you to do like this and then this so this is for your water parameters to keep your corals thriving and healthy and then this to add on with the enhance of your coral coloration at the same time i showed you guys in the last video that i actually have the reef energy from red sea as well the a b so i've been using that this and this all together to provide me with a very healthy reef so now you have seen all of my dosing right let's head back to the 25 gallon where i show you a couple more of the corals and how are they doing over back at the 25 gallon all right so we are at the 25 gallon right now so the tank itself currently i'm actually filling it up with um soft corals over there and then i'm trying to do an a euphelia garden over here which is basically hammer but then um they are still getting stable this three over here are doing well this one is new piece that i just put in so he's still trying to adapt to the water and then over here is my zoa garden as well as a couple of blastomes over here so we talk a bit about the colors in the tank so just give you guys a close-up on the hammer so this couple few pieces are doing very well they are the polyp extension is actually going longer and longer each day so i'm still waiting for this piece over here to open up properly but we'll see how that goes and then in front we actually have like a couple of blastofrags so a couple of green ones and then a red one over there and then over here we have the little zoa garden so the zoas are doing well they're actually opening up a lot more recently the colors are getting better and then at the same time their polyp extension is getting a lot bigger and on top here we have our very nice huge piece of the green ladder and then we have two toadstools over here we have the just let me zoom in this for you guys so we have the larger toadstool over here and then the more luminescent one over here and then just right above it we have a little small frag of the kenya tree I'm still hoping that this one will grow up as well so it fills up this little void of space up here. And then what else is there? Okay, so we move over to this side. So this side we have our very large Duncan colony. So this guy over here should be about hitting 15 hits already. And then our mushroom area here. We have our Yumas at the bottom. We added in a couple more couple of other discos other more yumas discos here and there so and then the grids uh, sorry the big toads too over here so corals wise they are pretty stable and they are thriving and they're actually getting better and better as each day goes by so i'm actually very happy for this tank that is thriving and it's growing well over here we have a red plate which used to be almost bleached out but then right now the colors are actually coming back a lot and right at the back there we have my uh, they say that this is a black torch i believe it's a black torch but these guys are doing very well as well and then same thing over here we have another very large colony of a hammer 
but this guy gets a bit too big it was an impulse buy that ended up being too big for the tank so I'll probably need to do something about this guy but then aside from that the entire skip the entire tank is looking good looking well so we will see what to add a bit more into the tank so just a little sneak preview on what is coming on next we will have a couple of more very interesting fishes to show you guys in the next couple of videos ahead and then if you notice that this tank aside for my pair of snow castles right my tanks are not here anymore so the reason why none of the tanks is inside here is because I'm actually adding in a new fish into the 25 gallon soon so I'll keep you guys updated on the next video next video is going to be very interesting I'm not going to tell you guys what is it but then you guys just have to wait for next week for the new video to come up so same thing really appreciate you guys for the support and all the subscription if you have not subscribed right click that subscribe button below do not make my clownfish feel sad if you really want to see them for the next one year right please do subscribe to the channel below and same thing thank you all for the support i will see you guys soon next week